we must astonish them and look good doing it. Hello and welcome to a Smurf P video and today it is Holy Grail time. For a very, very long time I have wanted the Astonishing X-Men Omnibus and I finally have it. So I just wanted to talk through it and show it off. It's quite a, it's not a big size Omnibus, it's quite a nice neat and tight series because that's what it was. It was one series, Joss Whedon at his best working with John Casty who produced some fabulous art in this book. It was just sensational. And as Scott Summers says, we must astonish him. And Josh Whedon, he astonished us X-Men fans. And it's one series that is still considered one of the favorites in most fans' eyes. Um, one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed, um, it's not a big deal, but I feel like this bit for some reason has faded. You may not be able to see it on the video. Um, and the writing seems a bit, I don't know what it is, maybe it's because this is dark and this is not as dark, but it certainly doesn't look, it looks like this has perhaps been somewhere. Um, it doesn't affect it, it just doesn't, it's a little, just a little bit irritating. So, this is one of the best runs in X-Men history, and it collects Astonishing X-Men 1 to 24 and Giant Size Astonishing X-Men 1. So literally 25 issues. Underneath was quite straightforward, just a simple X. And then on the side, it's got the silver on the side, basically pretty much it. And then Josh Whedon, John Cassie at the bottom. Okay, and so we have a bit about the writer, the artist, and all the other talented people that were part of this historic moment. And we get a little 101. I guess of the characters, yeah, pretty much, and where they've been in their lives, which is quite nice. It's not a big deal. So this followed on from the new X-Men, so new X-Men, Extreme X-Men, Uncanny X-Men runs, and I think for a lot of fans, they had moved away from a lot of the superhero stuff, and they were a bit more, oh no, they're trying to make them look cooler, Lever was clearly in, in the early 2000s. And this was kind of fresh. They were, Scott decided after he, he's running a school with Emma Frost. Also, Jean Grey's died and he's hooked up with Emma as well. So, a fresh new relationship there. And I really enjoyed their relationship. Their relationship is one of my favorite things of this kind of era. And basically, he says, you know what? We're not just going to hide, etc. We're going to do a little bit more. And we're back in these really nice, cool costumes, which I dig. So the first art is called Gifted, and pretty much they're facing a potential cure that's just been announced. So they have that. If I remember correctly, Dr. Cafeta, who joins the X-Men a little bit later, I think she ends up destroying it. Um, don't quote me on that. There's some background characters. So we start seeing Blindfold. And we see this guy, Wing, who um, it, well, basically ends up dying. Uh, we also see the return of Colossus. Everyone thinks that she has been using Jean Grey's DNA because it's familiar. There's a few little scraps going on, which is cool. But ultimately, the first arc is pretty nice and enjoyable. Uh, we also get our first glimpse of armor. I'm pretty sure blindfolds in here somewhere. Could be talking art. So basically, Ord um, in the second arc, he kind of goes a bit rogue. He ends up giving Wing the cure when he's up in the air, causing him. Oh, actually, I think we're still on the first arc. So he loses his powers, <laughs> and he's um, desperate to get him back. So anyway, who who's gonna find Colossus? It's Shadow Cat, which is. Pretty cool. I dig it. I dig what, how they explained him coming back. And I always enjoyed this final episode, which is really, really awesome. And I like Nick Fury in this as well. Get a bit of Nick Fury before he goes undercover. 
after his little secret war. So, and this belt was pretty, pretty out. Uh, wow, my man. And this was pretty around the time that I actually, so early adult, I guess, late teenager, I decided to stop reading comics because I thought, hey, wait a minute, that's not cool. You're meant to be growing up. Yes, I was wrong. And by 2006, this was one of the first stories that I read. There's some nice little crossovers with Fantastic Four. Just get the story going. Uh, the second arc is around the Danger Room. So the Professor Xavier uh, knew that danger existed. And she had been asking for help all along. That she was really a sentient AI. And once again, in the second arc, she is... One of my favorite characters and you know I love it when later on once again she joins the X-Men but there are some brilliant battle scenes but she can never quite get rid of that program in and kill the X-Men and it all results in them ending up on Genosha she's going back to daddy to punish him and he's like well you know what you face my X-Men but you've never actually faced me so I thought that was quite cool and I think the X-Men, even though they're excited to see Professor Xavier, they realize, wait a minute, no, you've done some really bad things here. And we can't really be seen with you. It just continues getting worse. And this was around the time where we see, we read uh, Deadly Je Genesis came up pretty much soon off, around the same sort of time. Uh, Torn, which is... Which is the third outing, which is around Cassandra Nova. And sorry, um, spoilers. Um, I'm pretty sure most people watching this have hopefully read this. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just ruining it for them. And she starts messing with the X-Men once again. And it's clear that she was messing with perhaps the White Queen from the beginning. In fact, she's probably one of the reasons that she got her second mutation in terms of uh, Diamond. Uh, with the plots, if something goes wrong, she can use her later on. So I thought that was quite cool. Meanwhile, Odd is in space. And we get our friend up here. Uh, Brand, who is, once again, another cool character introduced into the series. And anyway, it all results with Danger and Odd kind of... I was going to say hooking up. That's probably wrong. And they all converge on destroying the X-Men and in the end they all come about and here it is and that's pretty cool that's some really cool there's some beautiful art in here like I said John Cassidy is a genius and in the end they ended up all getting kind of teleported up onto Brand spaceship and take hey there's blindfold yes I was right I'm not losing it. And anyway, they end up on this world. And in a nutshell, Colossus is meant to be Breaker of Worlds, whatever it's called. And we see some of Scott Summers. So this is where Scott Summers, for me, I always liked the character. But this is where he was. He was the boss, man. He was everything that I wanted. And, I, and you know, this carries on throughout the next sort of few years where... Scott Summers is leading the team from the brink of extinction. You can argue with me as much as you want. Back to mutant kind being alive with uh, Hope Summers. You know, this is just, this is kind of where I feel the start happens. And then after this, we fuck, we're going to Messiah Complex and that, that brilliant uncanny run with uh, Dark Rain and Utopia. You know, and this is... This, oh, sorry, I got my light in the way. One of the beautiful scenes I love to me, my X-Men, you know. You know, it's, it's moments like this that Josh Whedon so famously wrote that just make it phenomenal. Anyway, long story short, we get to the big finale. It's a bit, everyone kind of has some weird dreams. We've got the big Sentinel up there. And pretty much Shadow, it's up to Shadow Cat to save the world. It's also up to Colossus. And everybody's been a bit manipulated as well in the grand scheme of things. So between Colossus and Kitty, 
they save the whole world and Kitty ends up in a giant bullet which um, Magneto later brings back you know so a beautiful ending to a brilliant series and then once again it just goes into the next step which is Maasai Complex and it's just gone. Uh, at the end we get a little introduction and we get some nice little covers there's actually a direct cut off issue one I had it a while back um, I, I think I ended up giving it up I can't remember what was actually different about it but um it's there they also had some nice covers going down and then planning emails I like I like I do enjoy seeing this sort of stuff how to plan it John Cassie I guess he sketches to begin with or concepts before they're approved And then we get a spotlight in the future as well from John Cassidy. So there's, there's lots of nice little extras at the back. In terms of comparison, I'm just going to show you against the new X-Men, which came before, which was a much bigger omnibus or series. And then we got a, a smaller omnibus next to it, the Uncanny Avengers, which I'm still disappointed they didn't put axes at the end of it um, because it made absolute sense because that's what it led on to. I just thought I had my two pens about that, but there it is next to a small and a big omnibus. Uh, one thing I, that still remains unclear, I am still unsure why we haven't seen a uh, reprint of this omnibus. It's such a famous omnibus that it would make sense to give us a reprint because I think lots of people love this series or have heard about it who want to go and read it. It makes perfect sense, but they haven't done it. I don't understand why, which means that the price of this on eBay can be excruciating. It, you know, it goes between 80 quid sometimes to 120, which is a lot. I got this for about 70, so I don't feel so bad about it. But I held out for a very, very long time. I'm telling you, there was times when I almost pulled the trigger on that 100. And, you know, even though I may have saved only... 30 odd quid it's still a lot of money and you know most omnibuses that i i buy i, I pre-order etc i usually spend 50 to 60 very rarely do i spend more than that so to spend it on this which is let's be honest not the biggest omnibus in the world it's a nice omnibus but i would wait try and wait until you find the absolute deal of a century that may be a very long wait, but it's worth it. And you feel better about it when you've brought it. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. My page is Smurd P. Or on Twitter at Smurd P. And embrace the geekiness. Take care. Bye-bye.